Hi, in this video I will discuss how to add the dependency injection in the Azure function to achieve IOC, basically the inversion of control. Azure function supports the dependency injection software design pattern which is a technique to achieve inversion of control between classes and their dependency. Basically what we have to do, we have to create one Azure functions project and then we have to add some pre-requests. The pre-requests are some NuGet packages, Microsoft Azure functions extension, Microsoft.NET SDK functions, Microsoft extension dependency injection. So these NuGet packages we need to add to begin with. Also, the support for dependency injections begins with the Azure Functions 2.x. I think right now the 3.x is available, so we are good with that. For service lifetime, Azure Function app provides the same service lifetimes as ASP.NET dependency injections. These are transient, scoped, singleton. Transient services are created upon each resolution of the service. Scoped, these are created once per function execution. Singleton, we will create it for the document client or HTTP client instances. Let's just jump directly into the code and see how it works. I am into Visual Studio. I will click on create a new project. I will select Azure Function Template. Click Next. Give it a name. DI Demo. Click Create. And here I will select the HTTP trigger. Click on Create. And the project is created. To validate that what I will do, I will just run it. Build is succeeded. Cool. So it is running. And to verify that, what I'll do, I'll just copy this URL and I'll go to I'll go to browser and paste that. Cool. So the function has returned some message and it is working. We are good here. Now next what we will do, I'll just stop it and we'll add the NuGet packages. For that I'll go to dependency, right click, click on manage NuGet packages. And the first one which I have to do is Azure Function Extension. Select that, install. I accept. And the next which we want to add is SDK functions. It is already there, so we are good. And the last one we will add it at the runtime. Next, we will add the startup class. For that, what I'll do, right click on the project, go to add, click on class, name it as a startup, dot cs. In the class, just make it as a public and make sure this class inherit from the function startup class. And we have to add the namespace, the missing using. Okay. And also we have to implement the abstract class. Okay. I'll just command this. And one very important thing is we have to add the one attribute here. And if we don't add this attribute, it will don't recognize this startup class. So the attribute is assembly function startup. type of namespace di demo dot startup one bracket is pending one more cool save it build the solution and if you want to ensure this is working fine put a debug point here run your application Cool. So it is hitting the debug point. It means it is recognizing the startup class. So we are good here. Next, we will try to read the configuration file. And in case of Azure function, we know that configuration goes to the local settings file. So let me go to the local settings file and add some configuration here. And it should be in the form of key value pair. So I will say my options, my options, colon, my settings. And what Else I have to do, I have to create a one class with the name my option. I'll go to the project, click on add, click on class, name it as my options, click on add, go back to the local files, 
copy the name my settings go back to your class right prop double tap make it as a string replace my property and make this class as a public okay now what we will do we'll go back to the startup.cs class i'll add some code so basically i have to use the builder dot services and add options and I have to mention the class which I just added my options and there I have to mention the configure and then I have to get it I configuration and then I'll mention settings configuration configuration dot get section and the section name is my options dot bind settings And we have to close this and to fix this other we are missing the parenthesis and the using okay cool save it build the solution so solution build succeeded next what i will do i'll try to read this value in the function i'll go to the function i'll clear the constructor here and in the constructor i'll say i options and name of the class my options and i'll say options here it should be i options and we have to add a using here okay also we have to write the private read only my options and let's see my options now to make the di complete what i have to do my options should equal to options and what it says is the issue is coming because this class is static and we cannot have the instant constructor here and also I'll remove the static from here okay and let me add it properly and it should be options options dot value cool we are good here save it and what i will do next i just try i'll say you will go and add the log information only in case my options uh, i'll write it in this way if my options dot my settings is equal to equal to that's it true since it should be in a string form so i'll write it, it like in this way okay so i'll put a debugger here now i'll try to run it and see if it is working fine or not click continue okay copy the url go to the browser paste it hit enter and let's see what the values are coming here so my options are there and my settings it is false basically it will skip this cool so we are good we are able to fetch the configuration entries into the your functions cool so what we will do next we'll add the service for that i'll go to the project add a folder and i'll name it as a service and in that file i'll do i'll add two classes so what i'll assume we are getting or fetching the name from the database 
so i'll say db repo and what i will do i'll create one interface here and i'll name it as idb repo and it should have only one method basically the get name and this class it should inherit this interface idb repo and i will implement this method here and what i'll do i'll just return the name for now i'll just say rohit and next what i will do i'll go to the startup.cs and here i will add the di and to add that what i have to do i have to write the builder.service dot add transient what all the service lifetime which i have mentioned these are available here and in this is and in our case i'll be mentioning add transient and first i need to mention the idb repo comma db repo and add the using statements and this should be we go back it should be db repo cool now the last important thing to use the service in the functions for that i'll go back to the function and in the functions first i'll get the idb repo same way how i get the my options read only idb repo it should be db repo okay i think i missed i need to add the missing using here and same way we have to add the di and it should be idv repo and i'll say underscore db repo here now this db repo is getting from the underscore db repo now what i'll be doing i'll comment the line 32 and what i will try to i'll use the db repo object to call the get name and it will return the name so what i'm going to do i'll just run this application to see if it works or not continue get the url go to browser enter again continue cool hello rohit this http ticket function executed successfully and this completes the di also successfully cool so in this way we can inject the settings as well as service into the azure functions so if you like this video hit the like button subscribe and do share it with your friends thank you